And I want to go into, because you fathered the concept here and the data point that we brought out just because of your idea here, because you were talking about keeping this, this, uh, this width at the top. So we took out this initial downswing direction from the face on move, basically seeing if you're dropping the hand straight down in transition, if you're, if we're keeping the width there, would you like to go there and, and talk a little bit about your ideas about the initial downswing direction on, on this uh, Y axis as we call it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not good at X, Y, and Z axis. So you got to, I'll get that wrong. So I'll stick with, uh, uh, but again, I, I've studied 3d for a long time. So a long time ago, I was seeing that the right arm bend, um, in, in the better players was less than it appeared on 2D video. And a lot of people are trying to overbend the right arm. And then they're, they're, they were then trying to bring their arm this direction because that's what it appears like on 2D video. You, you saw a narrowing this way, but that was really because of the way the body was orienting. But the, what we saw on 3D, we could segment each piece out. So we could see that the right arm was A, not bending as much in, in better players, and then it was also extending very, very early. But because of the orientation of the camera, it would look like it was narrowing because the angle between the wrist and the club changed. But the forearm or the forearm to elbow uh, extended this way. So being able to show that and measure that is tremendous. And most people think, OK, we've got to go wide to narrow. And that's, that's what it appears like on 2D video. It is not what the best players do. And, um, and so I was talking about that a long time ago, because it's always trail arm structure keeps the left arm in good position. Um, but people thought, okay, I've got to go wide to narrow to wide. And I say, no, no, it's, it's wide and then feel wider and then actually feel narrow, which is the deceleration phase. You're actually trying to pull the grip back this way, essentially through the ball and not trying to push power linear that way. That would not be deceleration. So that's very different from the, wide, narrow, wide concept, you're talking about wide, wide, narrow, basically, to, to fit yes. the acceleration and, and, and the, the release of the hands in the club. Correct, yeah. Because uh, the understanding, too, for me, is my personal journey of understanding. When I learned, whatever, five, six, seven years ago, where the mass of the golf club was, again, we weren't trying to affect the grip. We we're using the grip, but we were ultimately trying to affect where the mass is. When the mass of the club is trailing the handle too long, then now it's not going to, uh, again, ultimately get to club head speed. So understanding where the mass was, was a dramatic difference in what we were trying to affect. Yes, we're holding the golf club, but we're trying to make the mass of the golf club move around our body correctly. And that doesn't work when you're putting too much force too long towards the target. Mm. Yeah, and Marcus, I want to hop in here because this initial downswing direction, this IDDY, IDDX, data point that we are going to be releasing soon to the entire user base. Just give us a little bit more as to what, what this number, what, what you will be seeing in the app. How is it measured? And for, you know, users that are going to be soon to get this, I know we have a Martin Hall video coming out on golf pass next week. That's going to be illustrating this initial downswing direction, but just talk to us a little bit about how that is actually measured and maybe what it is that you should be looking for with that number. Yeah. So, so, the data point that John uh, helped us create here is, is when you come to the top of the backswing, the P4 position here. So we're looking at the face on angle, the way you're looking at me right now. Uh, initial downswing direction abbreviated to IDD. And this is on the Y axis, which is down the target line. So we're looking here at the, how wide the arc of the downswing is at the first four inches. Am I dropping straight down? It's going to give me a zero value because I have no width. Basically, I'm just dropping down. If I'm pushing out and if I'm casting the club, which you don't want to do, you're really casting out, you can have a 90 degree value. So what we're looking at the better players here are about between 30 and 45 degrees, just holding that width coming down. So that, that's, uh, that's what we've seen in the, the, the data points we have. We haven't had it on the whole user base yet, John, but I'm looking at about 30 to 45 degrees on the arc of the, of the initial downswing here. And um, yeah, but that's, that's tremendous. One of the things that people don't realize that they're, they're, they're pretty good about understanding where their hands are. I've found until they get about this far back and then it all becomes a bit of a mystery back here, even for tour level players. Like they're, they're aware in big chunks, but they're not really aware totally in here. And, even though players are pushing that direction, the mass of the golf club is on this side of my head. 
and the mass of the club had just gone that direction a millisecond earlier. So even though I think I'm pushing on that, the mass is like, like a parachute over here almost. Um, so force precedes motion. So be able to show people that. They see this in good players, but if they, when they realize that's actually happening, that's going to be huge, I think, because they, even though a golfer thinks they're doing this very quickly, it's not happening that fast. And it's really the club head will actually lag more when they apply more force on that grip. That's what I was going to show because because this is one thing we talked about. If you have the club here and, and you, you're afraid of doing this, the casting motion, when you're yep. pushing the arms out, you're actually increasing your lag here. Yes. Yeah. For the little space I have. Yeah, no, but Sasha McKenzie is the one that helped me a lot with that, that the mass is following the force is, sorry, the mass is following the force. So if I, if I push that direction, it actually looks like it's gone more lag, which is a bit of a, mind-blowing thing for most players i still struggle yes. to get my head around i can see it in other people it's difficult to even for my own game be aware of it and mm -hmm. trust it so that is the the initial downswing direction seen when you see the avatar in the the whiz app on the face on view that's where you can see this this start of the downswing the very initial the first four inches uh of the of the downswing and and then when you're looking at the player on the down the line view we're looking at, at the plane angle coming down. That's the initial downswing direction, the toe heel wise. And, and if you're transitioning back towards your heels, you're going to get a negative number. If you're transitioning straight down as a zero number and transitioning towards your toes, that's a positive number. And again, what we see with the best players, professionals and low handicap is that to transition their hands towards their toes. And this is what we call the IDDX because it's on the x-axis. Not to be mixed up with the transition value in the WIS, which is a comparison between backswing plane, backswing hand path, and the start of the downswing, which is basically just orienting how, how your hands are moving in comparison to your backswing. So that's the initial downswing direction here is just giving you from the very top how are your hands moving are they moving towards your toes? That's a positive number. Towards your heel, negative. And straight down would be a zero value. So can I just ask a couple of questions there? So you, I think what you said was it's going this way in the better players. The, the handle is moving toward the toes. So right. um, a lot of golfers out there are trying to shallow the shaft. And yeah. a lot of times, unfortunately, the body's pitching out and they're trying to just simply do this, which is it may look better on video, it doesn't work because now your arms are getting behind your body. So it, you can make it look pretty on video, but it, the ball doesn't go anywhere. And, and we know that the club mass is kind of in line that way. So if I take the handle this way a little bit, the mass is actually going to try and it's actually, that's the shallowing. It's not, this is not shallowing. That's actually steepening. And so I, I look at a lot of players and I'm looking to see like my, this shirt's pretty good actually, because you can see the difference in colors. I don't want the, the arm pitching behind my rib cage. So if my arm does that, that's actually what we're trying to do. And the mass obviously is, is going back the other way. And at the top of the swing, the force is quite large. I could try and do that. I'm not going to do it that much because the club is like, again, you've just taken the club back that direction. And now it's almost like, wait a minute, I don't want to go there. It's, there's a moment of it just kind of sitting there, basically. So being able to show a golfer not only this direction, but toe heel is phenomenal because, again, force precedes motion. So... You may think it looks like this, but the force is actually going that way. You're seeing most pros and golfers see the golf club because I've spent so much time, again, doing TPI stuff. We're looking at the body and how that's influencing ultimately the golf club. So when I see an issue, I'm trying to trace it back to where it became an issue. And it's generally not where the golfer sees it first. Very interesting. It's almost like we, we prepared this beforehand because the last <laughs> data point we're about to release now to the public is whether you're shallowing or steepening the shaft in transition. Of course, we're looking at the forearm rotation of the whiz here, which corresponds very good to the shaft itself. And like you said, John, the better players, they're transitioning their hands slightly outwards, basically on the plane line, and the mm -hmm. shaft shallowing uh, slightly in transition. Perfect. Yeah, we, did, we yeah. didn't set it up earlier, but that's, <laughs> that's, um, that's the illusion of 2D video a lot of times that, that sends us down a bad path. 
um, we're way better with golf instruction than we ever have been, but still we get misled by what we see. And, and that psychology experiment of showing you a picture of something you like, and then you tend to see that uh, yeah. having data actually takes us out of that. You know, we have preferences, everybody does, but if we have data, it's very hard to argue against. It's really you know, good. People will try. What Marcus is talking about is what we are working on a lot now over the past, we've been working in the past months or so, is to get, we talked about it offline before, is to, so how, how are the hands actually rotating around the three axes throughout the entire golf swing? And on this, since we have the positions of the hands, we can actually take out the golf positions, P, P1, P2, P3, all the way to P9, and look at the rotation numbers in each and every position. And then it's a lot more comparable to other players. That's that's, that's cool. fantastic. Yeah, I mean, what we, we talk a lot right now about flexion, extension in the wrists and ulnar and radial. But ultimately, the biggest movement is is forearm rotation. I mean, it's not even right. close. I mean, these do move, no doubt. But the forearms rotating from pronation to supination is bigger than any other value yeah. that goes on. So if players don't have a – they can make up their own recipe, if you will. But this is happening. Um, and everybody's a little more focused on this stuff. Uh, that's kind of the end of the whip a little bit. You better have an understanding of where this is going, the orientation, how far it's going, how fast, way more influential. No, I, I've said for a long time, the best players compensate better than the bad players. I mean, so they, they all have a pattern and nobody's totally consistent, but they compensate better. So if they know their closure rates and any, any testing you want to do that, I'm all in because that's fascinating field for me. Is there a way to see... Um, like when is it closing? Because it's got to be, a, a, you know, it's not closing at the same rate the entire motion, is it? No, it's not. So we're looking. I mean, we're looking at distances before impact and after impact. So certain distance, let's say thirty centimeters before impact and thirty after, measuring it across the whole distance. We're looking thirty before, thirty after. So I mean, whatever you want to test and take out yeah, from that'd the be data, good. we can do it. No, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome to, to again, we, we kind of know some of the things we're trying to get to. How do you coach a player to actually do that? That's ultimately uh, what, our, what my job is anyway. You guys are helping with technology, but ultimately I've got to get them better. Uh, so understanding what the recipe is again helps tremendously. And the difference is quite significant if you try to hit different shots as we have tested mm -hmm. as well. You know, hold yep. off pattern or a full release as we talked about. So. Yeah, so so a fade release is what I want, which doesn't usually sacrifice much on distance. So a hold off pattern, if we're looking at stats, we can we can make it curve left or right. But if that person's scrubbing off a lot of speed, it's it's really not you know the trade off's not worth it. Well, guys, I'm going to hop back in here. We've gone 30 plus minutes. This has been very informative. I think a lot of people are going to find a lot of great value in this conversation. As we, as we mentioned and Marcus mentioned, these initial downswing direction data points will soon be in the app of all of our users. So you'll see it marked as IDDY, IDDX, and then the pronation, supination um, data point that we mentioned as well that will also soon be unlocked in all of your apps at home. So whenever you guys reach out to me and you email me or shoot me a message on Instagram and you ask, do you have the ability to do X? Do you have the ability to do Y? No, the answer is yes, we have the ability to do all of these things. And uh, some of them are just, you know, still in development and still doing testing as Annalise and Marcus are uh, constantly just hitting balls over and over and over again and testing out all of these data points. So we thank you guys so much for uh, taking the time to join the webinar. John, I really appreciate you taking the time to join us. Any, uh, any last comments from anybody before we get out of here? Uh, thank you for having me. A fascinating subject. I'm glad you guys are doing what you do, and I'm glad you're much smarter in that direction. I'm, I'm happy I'm able to guide you on some things to look at, but uh, thanks for doing what you do. Really appreciate it. Thanks awesome. so much, John. Uh, really mm -hmm. value your, your insights and, and the feedback. Thank you. You got it. Anytime. Thank Anytime. You. Thank you. All right. Thanks. thanks again to John, Annalise, and Marcus. Be sure to like and subscribe to the DeWiz Golf YouTube channel, and we'll uh, we'll be sure to be bringing you m many more of these DeWiz, DeWiz webinars here on the DeWiz Golf YouTube channel. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.